In Ruby, I can use an if statement to test whether a condition is true. In this example, I have a variable x and I've assigned the value 1 to it. In this if statement, I'm using two equal signs to test whether x is actually equal to 1. If it's true, then this code is going to get executed. If it's not true, nothing will happen. The way that I tell Ruby that the condition is complete is in one of three ways. I can either follow the condition with the then keyword, or I can use a semicolon, or I can move this to the following line. Another way to test the condition is by putting this code in front of the if condition. If I have additional tests that I want to perform, I can use the else if and else keywords. If I change the value of x to 2, we should see this get evaluated positively. The same rules apply for separating this expression from the code that you want executed if the condition is true. I can use a then keyword optionally, in which case I could put everything on the same line. Or I could use a semicolon at the end of the condition. In Ruby 1.8, I could have used a colon, but this is no longer valid in Ruby 1.9. If I have additional conditions that I don't want to specify explicitly, and I want to cover as a sort of blanket case, I can use an else statement. Let's change the value of x to 3, and we should see the else condition get executed. So what happened here is that first the program checked to see whether the value of x was equal to 1. This condition was evaluated as false, so this line did not get executed. Then the value of x was compared to 2. That was also found to be false, so this code was not executed. And finally, because the other two conditions were not met, the else statement gets executed by default. And we see the output. Unless is kind of an upside down version of an if statement because it's only true if it's false. So if I set x equal to 1 and I evaluate this statement unless x is equal to 1, this condition is going to evaluate as true. So this code will not be executed. And we see no output. If I add an else statement, the else statement is getting evaluated affirmatively. So the program comes in here, it asks, is x equal to 1? It says yes, because this is unless, it doesn't execute this. It comes to the else statement, and it executes the code here. The same syntax rules apply to unless statements when it comes to putting code on the same line. So this is not going to run because I need something to indicate to the interpreter that the unless condition has come to an end here. So I can either use a semicolon, then, or I can move this to the next line. The ternary operator is a concise way of performing an if-else statement. In this example, I assign the value 1 to x, and here I'm using the ternary operator in the form of this question mark and this colon. What this means is, if x is equal to 1, then do this, else do this. Since this is true, this entire statement becomes equivalent to print 1. And if we look at the output, that's what we see. An interesting feature of the if statement in Ruby is that it returns a value. So in this example, I've created a variable called fruit, and I've assigned the value oranges to it, which is a string. And I've also created a variable called adjective, which accepts the return value from the if statement. So what happens here is, the first condition is checked. Is the value of fruit equal to apples? Since this is not true, this is skipped, 
and execution continues onto the next line and the value of fruit is checked against the oranges string. This is evaluated as true and so the string tangy is returned from the if statement and assigned to the variable adjective and then I print out the value of the adjective variable. An alternative to writing this type of if-else-if statement is to use what's called a case statement. As you can see by comparing the example above with the case statement below, they're quite similar. The main difference here is that in the top example, you see a repetition of fruit equals, whereas down below in the when statements, you only see the value that you're comparing against. You don't see a repetition of the fruit variable. What's actually happening is that behind the scenes, Ruby is doing this comparison for each of these when statements, just as if you had written fruit equals apples or fruit equals oranges. And if I look at the output, I see that the two put statements are identical.